5-5 indirect proof. So our, our objective of this video is to use indirect reasoning to write proofs. And our focus question is how is indirect reasoning used when proving something? All right, here's your vocabulary. Number one, indirect reasoning. It is reasoning where all possibilities are considered and then all but one are proved false. And an indirect proof is a proof using indirect reasoning. All right, it says, it also says here, this is often in an indirect proof, a statement and its negation are the only possibilities. When you see that one of these possibilities leads to a conclusion that contradicts a fact you know to be true, you can eliminate that possibility. For this reason, indirect proof is sometimes called proof by contradiction. All right, so sometimes an indirect proof is also called proof by contradiction. Just a little extra there for you. All right, key concept of writing an indirect proof. There's three steps that you need to know. So I would write, I would write all three of these steps down. Number one, state as a temporary assumption the opposite or negation of what you want to prove. Like say you want to, say you want to prove the sky is blue. So you're going to temporarily state the sky is not blue. You're not going to call it some other color. You're not going to say the sky is red, the sky is orange. You're simply going to say the sky is not blue. Number two, show that this temporary assumption leads to a contradiction. So you're going to give me some fact that proves the sky is blue basically. Then conclude that the temp temporary assumption must be false and what you want to prove must be true. So once you show me that the sky, like you temporarily assume the sky is not blue, but then you give me a fact that says the sky is blue, then you conclude that the temporary assumption must be false and the sky is blue, of course. All right, let's look at another example. Next, I'm going to look at two, and then I'm going to have you do one. So, in the first step of an indirect proof, all right, so in the first step of an indirect proof, you assume as true the opposite of what you want to prove. So, here we go. Step one. Suppose you want to write an indirect proof of each statement. As the first step of the proof, what would you assume? You do not have soccer practice today. So, the opposite of do not have is do have. So, you would assume temporarily that you do have soccer practice today. Okay? So, you, so what you do is you negate what you're trying to prove. Alright? If it doesn't have a not in it, you add a not. If it does have a not, you take the not out. Okay? Letter B. An integer n is divisible by 5. So if you were going to write an indirect proof, you would say that an integer n is not divisible by 5. Okay? You're going to negate your statement that you're trying to prove temporarily. Alright? Remember, if it has not, you take it out. If it doesn't have not, you add it in somehow. Okay? Make sure it makes sense where you add it, okay? Like you wouldn't want to say, assume temporarily that n is divisible not by 5. That doesn't make sense, okay? You want to make sure where you put in the negation, it makes sense. And you negate the right thing, okay? So, let, let's see if you got this. So, suppose you want to write an indirect proof of each statement. As the first step, this is the first step we just went over, what would you assume? Number 1, or letter A. At least one pair of shoes you bought cost more than $25. And letter B, triangle box is not a cute. What would you go? What would you do here? Pause it. Answer these two real quick. All right. So letter A. It says at least one pair of shoes you bought cost more than $25. So you would need to negate this statement. So... 
we need we need to put not in here somewhere in some form. So at least one pair of shoes you bought did not cost more than twenty five dollars. All right, at least one pair of shoes you bought did not cost $25. All right, all we did, we took the statement, all we did was negate it. All right, we're not going to add anything else. Like, we're not going to say at least one pair of shoes you bought cost less than $25. We're just going to say it did not cost $25. Did not cost more. Sorry, I left the more than out. All right. So you're, you're not going to add anything in. Did not cost more than $25. All right. You're not going to add anything else. All you're going to do is negate it. All right. This did not cost more is the negation. All right. That right there, whoops. That is your negation. Did not. All right. Letter B, triangle box is not acute. To negate this, you're going to take out the word not. You're going to say triangle box is acute. All right. You're not going to try to say the triangle is obtuse, right triangle. You're just going to say since the triangle box is not acute, to negate that, you're going to say triangle box is acute. All right, hopefully you got those. Problem two, to write an indirect proof, you have to be able to identify a contradiction. All right, if you watch TV, you know what a contradiction is, okay? Basically, two statements that there is no way that they can possibly happen together. Okay, let's look at problem two here. Which two statements contradict each other? Statement one. Roman numeral one, line FG is parallel to KL. Statement two, line FG is congruent to KL. Can they be parallel and congruent? Yes, they can, so this is not the contradiction. Let's look at two and three. They're congruent and they're perpendicular. Can they be congruent and perpendicular? Yes, they can. Well, now let's look at statements one and three. Can they be parallel and perpendicular. No, they cannot. So, the parallel segments do not intersect, so they cannot be perpendicular. Statements 1 and 3 contradict each other. It is impossible for two segments to be parallel and perpendicular. So, therefore, 1 and 3 is the contradiction because they cannot happen at all. Okay, they cannot happen at all. All right. So let's try this. Let's try another. Got it here. Two a. Which two statements contradict each other? Triangle X Y Z is acute. Triangle X Y Z is scalene. Triangle X Y Z is equilateral. All right. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do B. We're just gonna do A. All right, so pause for a sec, figure out which two of these contradict each other. All right, let's check one and two. Triangle XYZ is acute, triangle XYZ is scalene. Can you have a triangle that is acute scalene? Yes, you can, so those are not the contradiction. Let's look at two and three. Can you have a triangle that is scalene and equilateral? No, you cannot. Because scalene means none of the three sides or the three angles are congruent. I'm sorry, that's an equal angular, not equilateral. But scalene means none of the angles are the same, none of the sides are the same. Equal angular means all three angles are the same. So statements two and three are contradictions. Okay, statements two and three 
are your contradictions. All right? Because it is impossible to have a triangle that is both scalene and equiangular. So those are our contradictions. It can be acute in scalene. That's completely fine. And an equiangular triangle is by default an acute triangle. So 1 and 2 are fine and 1 and 3 are fine, but 2 and 3 contradict. All right, now let's get to the part where we actually write the proof. All right. Now, these are easier to write than the other proofs. So, I'm going to show you one. Given triangle ABC is scalene, prove angle A, angle B, and angle C all have different measures. So, what are we going to It says, assume temporarily the opposite of what you want to prove. So, assume temporarily that two of the angles of A, B, and C have the same measure. So, we're going to assume that the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B. Now, we need to show that this leads to a contradiction. Okay? So, first, assume the opposite. Second, show that it leads to a contradiction, which is what we're doing here. By the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, the sides opposite A, angle A, and angle B are congruent. Well, this contradicts the given information that, that triangle ABC is scalene. Okay? Since it contradicts that, all right, we know now, okay, conclude that the temporary assumption must be false and what you want to prove must be true. So the assumption that two of the angles for triangle ABC have the same measure must be false. Therefore, angles A, angle B, and angle C all have different measures. Okay? So if you go back to that box that we had on the first slide, the first thing we did is we assumed the opposite of what we wanted to prove. We wanted to prove that all three angles were different. So we temporarily assumed that two of them were the same. All right? Then we showed that that led to a contradiction. If two angles are the same, by the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, two sides have to be the same. Okay? I'm kind of paraphrasing here. Well, that contradicts that the triangle is scalene, because scalene, none of the sides are the same. So now, we can conclude that our temporary assumption has to be false, so therefore, this triangle has to be a scalene triangle. There's no way around it. Okay, there is no way around it. All right, does that make sense? Um, I'm not going to have you do that proof. We're going to be doing some of those tomorrow. All right, so remember that focus question, how is indirect reasoning used when proving something? Answer, indirect reasoning is used by assuming the opposite of what you want to prove is true. Then you show that this causes a contradiction. Okay, these are these are some of the shortest proofs we'll write. I think they're a lot easier than the other ones because you assume the opposite, show it leads to a contradiction, and then basically show that what you're trying to prove must be true. Okay? So, here's your ticket in the door. Make sure you copy this down and finish it for tomorrow. It says, suppose you want to write an indirect proof of the following statement. As the first step of the proof, what would you assume? Quadrilateral ABCD has four right angles. What would you, as, the, as step number one, what would you assume? Number two, write a statement that contradicts the following statement. Draw a diagram to support your answer. Lines A and B are parallel. And number three, a classmate began an indirect proof as shown below. Explain and correct your classmates' error. All right. So make sure you make sure you copy this down. Make sure you answer these three questions, and bring them with you tomorrow when you come to class. Good luck.